I'm Stacy Gordon. Welcome to That's My Jam. I decided I wanted to make a red velvet cake for this episode. Normally, I try to get through this part of the video really quickly so I can just get on with the recipe. But today, I feel like it's really important to talk about the origins of this cake. I'm convinced if you looked up a hundred different recipes, you'd find a hundred different ways to make this cake and or its frosting. I have three different friends who grew up eating traditional red velvet cake made by either their mother or their grandmother. These cakes were the first exposure I ever had to red velvet cake. This was not something we had in my house growing up. I'm going to say somewhere around 2010-ish, red velvet cake exploded. Suddenly, everyone had a recipe for it. Bakeries were selling it. You could get red velvet scented candles. It was just everywhere. But the thing that was really curious to me was that suddenly all the red velvet cakes I was seeing had cream cheese frosting. Now don't get me wrong, I love cream cheese frosting. I even like it on red velvet cake. But that wasn't the way I knew a red velvet cake to look. So, after spending a ridiculous amount of time online this morning, I finally came up with these conclusions. Now, a lot of different people like to take credit for inventing this cake, but one fact everyone agrees on is that sometime around 1900, non-Dutch cocoa became readily available in the United States. Non-Dutch cocoa, like Hershey cocoa, is a non-alkalized cocoa. That makes it a little less mellow than Dutch cocoa, but when mixed with something acidic like buttermilk or vinegar, it gives it a faint red hue. So that's where the red color originated, not from a bottle of food coloring. The next thing I was able to confirm is that the original red velvet cake did not have a cream cheese frosting. The original old fashioned recipe had an ermine frosting, sometimes known as a boiled milk frosting, a roux frosting, or a cooked flour frosting. So that's how we're gonna make this cake today with the original ermine frosting. So that's why I felt like going through that history was important today. But now, let's just get to it. We're going to make some old-fashioned red velvet cake. The ermine frosting is a bit of a process, so we're actually going to start that first. In a saucepan, we're going to mix one-fourth cup flour. To that, we'll add one cup of milk. And we're going to turn this on some low heat. We're going to start whisking this mixture together. Making this roux is not a super quick process. You might be tempted to turn your heat up to speed things along, but you'll scorch your milk. So just stay diligent and leave the temperature on low. Eventually it will get done. We don't want any lumps in this mixture. So stay diligent with your whisk and pretty soon you're going to have a paste that looks like this. Once you've achieved that, we're going to remove from the heat and transfer this roux over to a bowl. We're going to cover the roux with some plastic. I'm going to get this plastic down so that it's actually touching the roux rather than the bowl. This will keep it from making a film on top when it cools. We need this to be cold, so I'm going to put this bowl in the fridge for at least an hour, maybe two. Now's the perfect time to go tap that like button, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. 
While that roux is chilling, now we can start our cake. I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350 degrees. In my KitchenAid mixer, I'm going to mix one cup of butter or two sticks, two cups sugar, and two eggs. We'll lock this in and start creaming this mixture. Once that's creamed, it should look something like this. Now I'm going to mix one tablespoon of my non-Dutch cocoa. This is Hershey's cocoa. Now I've got one tablespoon apple cider vinegar. You'll refer back to what we said about the non-Dutch cocoa mixing with something acidic. We're gonna make this into a paste and then we're gonna add that to our creamed butter mixture. We'll turn the mixer back on for a minute to incorporate that cocoa paste. Now what we have looks something like that. I've measured out two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. To that, I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of salt and one and a half teaspoons baking soda. Now I'm going to sift that mixture. Those lumps won't make it into our cake. Next, I'm gonna measure out one cup of buttermilk. I'm gonna place the hood on my KitchenAid mixer and we're going to start alternating this sifted mixture with the buttermilk. The term velvet cake actually comes from the Victorian era. It was used to help differentiate this style of cake from the other popular cakes of the day like sponge and pound. Next I'll add about a teaspoon of vanilla And now would be the time to add that red food coloring. But before I do that, I just wanna show you the color of the batter. I see a tinge of red in there, but certainly nothing like the red velvet cake we're used to today. The red food coloring is not gonna change the taste of this cake. It's just gonna change the aesthetic. I hardly have any left in my bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and just add that in. This isn't gonna be a deep red cake and I'm okay with that. I'm gonna be making this in two round layers today. So I'm gonna use a little baking spray in each pan. I'll distribute the batter evenly between the two cake pans. My friend Beth's mamma would make the layers and then she would take thread or some type of thin string and go across the layers like that and cut them in half so that she would have four layers of this beautiful cake. More layers equals more frosting. We're gonna pop these into our 350 degree oven. I'm pulling these cakes out at about the 30 minute mark. All ovens are different, so you just need to make sure that these cakes are set and just lightly spring back to the touch. Now we're gonna let these cool. It's just about time to pull that roux out of the fridge, so we're gonna go on with the next step for the frosting. To our mixer, we're going to add one stick butter. one half cup Crisco. And one cup sugar. We're gonna cream this together. I let that go for a good two minutes or more on high. 
I really want to get that creamed and get a lot of air into that mixture. I've removed our roux mixture from the refrigerator and we'll take off the plastic. Next, we want to slowly start to incorporate this one spoon at a time into our creamed butter. One quick shout out to my friends Beth, Marty, and Robin, whose families made this cake the original way and taught me how to love it. We'll pick that up and get this super well blended. And just because that's how I roll, I'm going to add just a little vanilla to this. After whipping this on highest speed for two or three minutes, we're going to check this frosting. You can see it's super fluffy, almost like whipped cream. The taste is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and flip the first layer of the cake and let that finish cooling. This layer is cool. Let's go ahead and start adding some of our frosting. See how fluffy and creamy this is? People who skimp on frosting in between the layers, well, that's just not right. As with any cake containing butter frosting, you're going to want to refrigerate this cake within about four hours. Then when you're ready to enjoy another slice, Cut it and let it sit on the plate for about 10 minutes to get to room temperature. And voila, this cake is ready. It's not super red and that's perfectly okay. This cake is beautiful and I can't wait to taste it. It's a little bit chocolatey. The cake is a fabulous consistency. The ermine frosting, light, fluffy, not too sweet, but this is the way red velvet cake was intended to taste. Today's video is a little bit longer than usual, so if you made it this far, thank you. It was very important to me to talk about the traditional way to make this cake. This is one of my all time favorite cakes. And if you're not familiar with it, you really need to give this traditional ermine frosting a try. I truly hope you have a fantastic week ahead. Don't forget to tune in Thursday for something in a pot. In the meantime, turn off the TV, turn on some music, and just keep jamming.